Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white spirits list which is pretty similar to all of the blue-white flying decks out there. And one of the goals of the deck is to try and play Sephara as soon as possible. 7 mana for a 7-7 seven, seven flyer with a lifelink, giving other creatures we control with flying indestructible. But we can also pay a single white mana and tap 4 untapped creatures with flying we control, rather than pay Sephara's mana cost. And our deck is very consistent at casting Sephara on turn 4, can even play her turn 3 if we're lucky enough and have enough one drops. But uh, turn 4 is when we expect to play Sephara in this deck, since the entire deck, besides 4 copies of Winged Words, is all creatures with flying, and Winged Words is a 2 mana draw too if we control a creature with flying, that can draw us into more creatures with flying. So the deck is pretty consistent at doing its thing, we're not playing any favorable wins and we're not playing any Rally of Wings, both of those cards can be quite powerful. But uh, by playing more creatures we make our deck a lot more consistent at casting Sephara, and we also make the deck a bit more resistant against spot removal spells, since if we have a hand with a few creatures and a Rally of Wings and they start taking out our creatures one by one, the Rally of Wings doesn't do a whole lot by itself, whereas now our deck is just all creatures, so even if they kill one of them it's not the end of the world. So let's take a look at our list here, at 1 mana we've got 4 copies of Healer's Hawk, as a 1 mana 1 1 flyer with a lifelink, as well as 2 copies of a Rustwing Falcon, a 1 2 with flying so it doesn't die to any of the 1 damage effects like Goblin Chain Warlords. And then we have the full 4 copies of Siren Storm Tamer, which can also protect one of our creatures from a removal spell, so that's very important if we have a Sephara in play. If we also have a Siren Storm Tamer, we can use the Storm Tamer to protect Sephara, and that should cover most of our bases. And then we have the full play set of Spectral Sailor, which is probably the best one drop in the deck, as it's also Spirit, so it picks up the additional synergy from Supreme Phantom giving it plus 1 plus 1. It has Flash, so we can play it at instant speed, and of course a Mana Sync for 4 mana, letting us draw a card is great at helping us re fuel. Then at 2 mana we've got the full play set of Remorseful Cleric as a 2 mana 2-1 two with flying, can also sacrifice it to exile all cards from target player's graveyard, which can be relevant against some decks, for example the 4-color Cathus Legendary Combo deck can be disrupted by the Cleric, but for the most part it's just a 2-1 flyer that's also Spirit, so it also picks up plus 1 plus 1 from Supreme Phantom, which is the card we're playing over a card like Favorable Winds or Rally of Wings, as a 2 mana 1-3 flyer giving other spirits we control plus 1 plus 1, and besides most of the 1 drops and Sephara, all of the creatures in this deck are spirits, so Supreme Phantom does cover most of our creatures. And then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Hanged Executioner, 3 mana for a 1-1 one, one flyer, enters the battlefield alongside a 1-1 one, one spirit token, and for 4 mana we can exile the Executioner and exile an opposing creature as well. So despite being a deck with only creatures, we still get access to a bit of interaction which is nice, and of course getting those 2 flying creatures for just 1 card makes it even easier to cast Sephara. And then last but not least, a full playset of Empyrean Eagle, very powerful in this deck, as a 3 mana 2-3 flyer, that's also a spirit, giving other creatures we control with flying, plus 1 plus 1, which covers all the creatures in this deck. And then for the mana base, we've got 7 planes, 7 islands, 4 glacial fortress, and 4 hallowed fountains. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. If we did get to play Sailor turn 1, turn 2, Winged Words, turn 3, Executioner, maybe Sephar on turn 4, this hand could be okay, but as it stands, it's pretty bad. Alright, this is better, now we've got the Fountain with turn 1 Sailor. Turn 2 I could just play Cleric, or I could keep the Winged Words. Could also ditch Sephara if we don't think we can play her in time. So if we draw a third land, then we could play Sephara turn uh, 4, which is pretty nice. So it's between probably Winged Words and Cleric. If I keep the Winged Words, then potentially turn 2 I can draw 2 cards, which gets me closer to casting the Executioner but then we're still going to be one flying creature short of playing Sephara. So maybe we just keep this, hope they don't interact with us, draw the third land, and then play turn for Sephara. At least that's the hope. Ah, that's a decent pickup. Blue red. A radical idea. So, some sort of Phoenix deck, presumably. Uh, 
Well, Supreme Phantom's looking slightly better than a uh, Favorable Winds would in this spot. I'm kind of sad Dungeon Geist never got to see the light of day in a Spirits deck. But um, with Sephara as kind of your incentive, you don't really have room for uh, expensive flyers that only make one creature essentially. Well, not sure how our opponent recovers from this. Did have a Sephara for next turn, but not necessary. Pretty decent opener. No spirit, turn one, but uh, all the other creatures are spirits. Is this the blue-green flash deck or some ramp deck? It looks like blue-green flash and we already have a bit of a board presence here. Now our opponent could have an essence scatter. I think we make them have it. Or syncopate. I guess against syncopate we wanted to play cleric. No, they don't have it. Maybe on summon. If they have a trickster, what happens? That's fine. I just play Executioner here, which is the one I care about getting countered the least. And we'll see what they do about it. Let's it resolve. So I could also decide not to attack here. Since if they trickster me, then I would lose the eagle or the phantom. So I'm just gonna pass a turn here. And then next turn I can maybe set up something. Alright, just an unsummon. And a cutthroat. Your opponent probably should have played Cutthroat first there. They're missing double green at least. Don't really mind if this gets countered. Do I keep a spirit back to block Cutthroat? Maybe I should keep a 2-2 back. So I guess I'll play Eagle first still, and then if they syncopate that, they need to pay X equals 2, and then they can't flash in a Trickster as well. So they were probably better off targeting the Executioner there. I guess I could Winged Words and Cleric to double spell. I could also keep up the Executioner's ability. Alright, Bone and packs it in. I 
All right, what do we have here? A hand that needs to draw a third land, and then we're in pretty good shape. On the draw, we can probably keep this. Turn one Field of the Dead. The Scape Shift matchup should be decent, because we can just fly over a bunch of zombies. If they the ferry, we can finish him off. I guess I like Empyrean Eagle still. Alright, Time Wipe is unfortunate. That's one of the few ways that they can have to really interact meaningfully. Not all the decks uh, play it. And we still get to rebuild pretty nicely. But that might have bought them just enough time to take over here, we'll see. Yeah, Selfless Spirit would have been nice. Definitely would have been an upgrade over Cleric. Land is decent, although I guess we still can't quite play Sephara. Needed one more creature in play. Yeah, I guess we'll kill Teferi and play Executioner. And then next turn I could go Cleric into Sephara, but it's probably going to be too slow. We'll see. And grow spiral. Do we have escape shifts? We do. Eh, probably dead now. He had a time wipe, bought him just enough time here to take over. Didn't think a 7 7 life linking Sephara is gonna save us. And at 13, even if we play Eagle. We're still only hitting for six. Just double checking that they didn't mess up. All right, doesn't look like it. Hand seems fine. I don't know, I've kind of been digging the no favorable wins version of this deck. Just seems like we've got fewer of those clunky hands with uh, too many of the anthem effects and not enough creatures. Another scapeshift opponents. The Cleric isn't great in this matchup, just because it gets bounced by Teferi and doesn't do anything special when he enters battlefields. But it's still an extra spirit for the spirit package and yeah, I mean, a 2-1 a flyer by itself isn't the worst. Prison Realm, pretty old version of Escape Shift then. I guess I like Storm Tamer plus Cleric instead of Eagle. It lines up a bit better against the Fairy, I think. And that way we'll have the Storm Tamer protection for for Eagle, in case they have another Prison Realm. I 
I think we've got two decisions here. We can go Eagle plus Hawk or Eagle keep up Storm Tamer in case I have another Prison Realm. I think just dumping our hand is the way to go here. I'm fine losing to a Time Wipe. Again, not all versions play it. And we gotta make sure to put enough pressure on them so they can't uh, scape shift and kill us before we present lethal. I could also ignore Teferi, which is also reasonable since we're presumably killing them before they get another Teferi minus activation. Uh, we're probably dead to a time wipe anyway. And them playing their sorceries at instant speed doesn't matter, even with them potentially making zombies since all our creatures fly anyway. Put them to 14 and then next turn I would have uh, 8 plus 4, 12. I wouldn't quite have killed them yet, but I would have gotten close. Hand seems reasonable-ish. We need another cheap creature and a third land. Double Sephira, of course, is a little awkward. Yeah, we'll try it. Temple of Silence, so presumably the Kathis combo deck. Probably still playing the Cleric here. At least Cleric interacts meaningfully with Kathis, so that's nice. If I had to guess, this matchup is probably reasonably okay. We're pretty close to playing the Sephara. I guess for now just double Cleric is fine. I guess we gotta watch out for Urza's Runa's Blast. That's the one card that is very good against us in the matchup. But again, that's probably a card we're not beating anyway, so no point in playing around it. I will kill Teferi here since it has more value than in the scapeshift deck. Eh, GG's. Yeah, Sephara would survive Runa's Blast, but we couldn't play her that turn. So once they wipe all the flyers, we're pretty dead. Alright, this hand can potentially play very early Sephara, so we'll keep. We've got one blue source and two blue one drops whereas we only have the one white one drop plus two white land so we definitely want to lead with the blue source here could be the mirror match could be up against mono blue could just play supreme phantom i mean i guess if i play phantom and i draw any land i can still play Sephara next turn just by going double one drop into Sephara. If I play Phantom, I get to attack for two, whereas if I play double one drop, I can't really attack. So I like Phantom here. All right, it is a mirror match. The mirror match is gonna be pretty weird, but I'm guessing getting out Sephara on turn three is pretty good. And yeah, this is another case where Supreme Phantom a lot better than Favorable Winds would have been, since we needed that critically important fourth creature. 
My Executioner is very good too. Am I better off just attacking only with Sephara? If I attack with everyone, they get basically free blocks here unless they want to play around Rally of Wings. And I just get into extra damage, whereas if I stay back, I prevent a lot more damage potentially. So I feel like I just send Sephara for now. And then I could keep up Storm Tamer to protect from an opposing removal spell. Although there's not that many that they could have. Maybe a Conclave Tribunal. Getting the Executioner in play would maybe allow me to get rid of the opponent's Eagle and open up more attacks, but they also have Storm Tamers in play. So maybe I just Winged Words here, dig for more Anthem effects and keep up Storm Tamer just to be safe. Loyal Pegasus, a card that kind of underperformed and eventually got cut. It looks like they have their own Sephara. Alright. And they have double Storm Tamer up, so it's not like the Executioner would have done much. Yeah, this is gonna be a pretty weird game. I could start activating Sailor, I could run out the Executioner. None of us really have great attacks. I guess we'll start just leveraging the Sailor here. Opponent doesn't have one in play, we do. So that seems nice. Yeah, their Sephar is a bit bigger than ours. But, uh... Don't know if they can really attack. Well, we didn't want to attack with a Hawk into their 8-8 Sephara, since then they would gain more life than we gain. I guess I'll Winged Words, we can probably hit a land drop. Or not. We just want to find more Anthem effects. So we're definitely ahead in the card advantage race. Seems safe to play this out. So they probably picked up their own Spectral Sailor here, or they have a Rally of Wings in hand. Still no land. So maybe this is a turn where I just deploy a bunch of creatures before I start drawing more cards. I guess Executioner's fine. They have their own. So that's one of our Storm Tamers essentially dealt with. I guess I want to add more stuff to the board. We can't kill their Sephara since they had double Storm Tamer up. So we would have just traded our Executioner for a Storm Tamer. They have the Favorable Winds. Another Sailor. So I'll start drawing some more cards. So we are basically going to need to draw more Executioners than our opponent draws Siren Storm Tamers. Which is going to be tricky. Or we could just have so many more Flyers out there that we can attack for lethal through all the opponent's blockers, but that seems unlikely since they're going to gain a ton of life from all the lifelinking creatures too. Alright, Executioner number two. That's good. Do have to be somewhat careful here that I don't tap out while the opponent has four mana up, since then they could exile my Sephara. Although if it happens end of turn, it's not too bad, because then I can just replay another one. 
So if I end of turn, tap out, my opponent can get rid of my Sephara, but I get to play another one. So it's not too bad. They might also be holding additional Sephara's in hand. So the way to play this might just be to kind of sandbag my executioners and then activate them all at once. So the opponent never gets a chance to play another Sephara. In that case, I just want to activate Sailor. So we also need to hit more land drops here. So Executioner goes after Sephara, that's fine. Another Storm Tamer, good insurance. So let's tap some useless uh, creatures here. Two, three. Just want to draw more cards with our Sailor. I guess I could have main phase the activation, but eh, probably want to just keep up more Storm Tamer activations anyway. But yeah, as soon as their opponent finds a Sailor of their own, things get more complicated, so it's kind of on us to end this game as soon as possible. Which means I need to find a third Executioner before the opponent finds another Storm Tamer. So I don't think we're quite there yet where we can attack with everyone. I think I'm just playing Phantom and then activating Sailor again. I'm just going to hold the Storm Tamer so I can draw with Sailor and still have blue mana up for Storm Tamers in play. So, as soon as we find uh, an Empyrean Eagle or two, we could also maybe consider attacking. Alright, third Executioner could do it as well. Threatening double Executioner activation end of turn, untap, activate again. And that could set up a devastating attack. So our opponent definitely has more Sephiroth in hand at this point, since they haven't been playing much. They could have a Rally of Wings or two, maybe a Spell Pierce. Trying to think what other cards they might be holding in hand at this point. Alright, so what happens if I double Executioner their Sephara end of turn? They sag both Storm Tamers. Yeah, that should be fine. Right, let's see if we can find an Empyrean Eagle here. And there we go. Activate Executioner. And I've got Storm Tamer to protect against Selder Vankage. And that should do it. Alright, sweet. Alright, what about this hand? We're missing a 1-drop, no Sephara, but it's still pretty functional. I 
Against the Watery Grave, of course, uh, Thought Erasure is a concern. So it's possible getting the Supreme Phantom out there is better. Also survives Cry of the Carnarium, whereas the Cleric dies, so... It's kind of close. I think I'm leaning Phantom over Cleric. So Thought Erasure probably takes Empyrean Eagle. A control deck with a ton of sweeper effects is going to be a rough matchup for our deck. Yeah, it takes a winged word, so it probably implies they have a sweeper lined up here. And they're not too afraid of the early aggression. I guess playing Executioner first is better, because then the follow-up Eagle can hit for more. If they have a crowd of the Carnarium, they're kind of forced to play it out right now as well. I guess that was a reason to play Eagle first. Alright, Oath of Kai instead. Kills Phantom. I don't think we're beating Akaya's Wrath here, so I don't think there's a point in playing around it. I'm just gonna play double Cleric, I think, to be mana efficient. Although double Cleric is bad against Cry, whereas Eagle's not so bad. So that's the only decision here, do we play around Cry or not? Does their play make sense if they had a Cry in hand? They thought erasured my... Winged words over Empyrean Eagle. If they had a Cry, they probably would have taken the Eagle. So I don't think it makes sense for them to have Cry. So in that case, I'm gonna double Cleric. Bell Haunts. All right, that punishes me for holding the Eagle. But we still have double Cleric in play, which isn't bad. Uh, I guess I should play the land in case I have another Bell Haunt, because with five lands I can top deck a Spectral Sailor and activate it right away. I'm fine taking a hit there. All right, well, probably not winning this game. Hold on, I guess I should Executioner, the Bell Haunts, in case they have some way of recurring creatures on the graveyard, like Commander Dreadhorde. Cleric U. And then Cleric Me. So graveyards are nice and empty. And that's a land, so I guess I can hold that one. But if they slam down a planeswalker here, I'm good to scoop it up. So yeah, sweepers are a weakness of the deck. Asper control, not something we want to be facing with our flyer deck. Alright, so this hand has potential with the double winged words. On the play with double one drop, I think we can keep. Of course, we could fail miserably if the winged words gives us more lands or nothing of substance, but. Gotta believe. This hand could be good at casting Sephara if we find her, since we already have two one drops. And there we go. I guess I like Winged Words here to be mana efficient. Alright, we're just one creature away from casting the Sephara. I guess we're a bit short on white mana as well. Stormkin, so some sort of elemental deck. So there's no sweeper effects to really be concerned with other than maybe Chandra at 6 mana. So we can take our time. So how about... Cast another Winged Words here. Spectral Sailor is great. So we can set up the surprise Sephara by going end of turn Sailor into double Falcon into Sephara. And that's fine. And 
The elemental decks usually don't have much in the way of removal. So I'm not sure if they can deal with a 7-7. I guess I can even play Cleric over Falcon. And then Empyrean Eagle next turn is hopefully going to put the nail in the coffin. And the yeah, opponent just packs him in. So, yeah, in some matchups, Sephara is just game if we can get her out there in time. So there's definitely a lot of uh, advantage to running her. So we had some games where um, we got an early Sephara, we had some games where our opponent had some sweeper effects, and... Uh, we weren't really able to follow up with anything of substance. Kind of shows the range of games you can have with this deck. But it's definitely pretty powerful. And I think overall I'm happy with the addition of the Spirit Package over playing Favorable Winds. Just because it gives us more creatures to help us convoke out Sephara essentially. Whereas sometimes with Favorable Winds and Rally of Wings you end up with too many of those types of cards. And not enough actual creatures for Sephara. And those hands can be pretty awkward. Even though Rally of Wings, of course, has a lot of explosive potential to help you close out the game a turn sooner. So I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.